The world is changing, and the rate of change is accelerating. These changes affect almost all aspects of our lives, from transportation to farming and the factory, and from the home to education and entertainment. Our lives are now vastly different than just a few short years ago. Most of these changes involve electronics, but if you look more closely, you'll see that software is at the heart of just about every significant step. Hello, I'm Watts Humphrey of the Software Engineering Institute, and I'll be talking about software, its growing role in our lives and businesses, and why an effective software capability is essential for just about any business. I'll then review some steps you can take to build a competitive software capability. Today, software powers the internet, controls transportation, and manages financial markets. Software handles the transfer of trillions of dollars every week. And these changes are truly extraordinary, and they bring extraordinary opportunities. But with each new opportunity comes a risk, and the risk is that you may not be prepared for the future. My thesis is that these changes will almost all involve software. And to have any real control over your future, you must be in control of your software business. As Yogi Berra once said, prophecy is hard, particularly when it involves the future. But judging by the recent past, the opportunities are immense. The US Federal Reserve notes that integrated circuits and software have fundamentally altered the way business is done. They estimate that this technology alone has nearly doubled the productivity growth rate of the entire US economy. The size of the information technology industry has quadrupled in just five years, and the rate of change is not slowing. It may even be accelerating. If you have not started already, it is time to prepare for this software-intensive future. The internet is perhaps the best example of a software-driven change, and here is what some industry leaders are saying about the internet. It will fundamentally change the way business is done. It will impact manufacturing, purchasing, inventory management, product distribution, and customer service. Dell Computer, by dealing individually with its worldwide customer base, has achieved an astounding 240% return on investment. While the internet revolution is upon us, it is equally inevitable that it will involve software, lots of software. Some people feel that software capability can be bought, like catering or building services. But it is software that makes your products and services unique. Unless you control your software technology, you cannot be in control of your business. Having control of software requires that you have a competent software organization. The measures of software competence are standard business measures, produce quality products, for their committed costs and on their planned schedule. With software, however, this is no mean trick. Software organizations have been missing schedules and cost commitments for years. One reason for this poor state of affairs is poor software quality practices. In all of modern technology, software is the only field that does not consider quality until products are put into test. It's not the engineer's fault, however, since this is how they've been trained and how they are managed. Software is not generally viewed as requiring engineering discipline. This is fundamentally wrong. Current poor state of software practice produces late, over budget, and highly defective products. For example, even experienced programmers inject about one defect for every seven to 10 lines of code. For a moderate sized program of 100,000 lines of code, this is 11,000 defects. This is not just a couple of bugs. These defects must be found in compiling and testing. Thus, testing takes a very long time, and after that, the products are still highly defective. This chart illustrates the problem with testing. Assume that the circle represents all the possible ways to stress the program. At the top is maximum overload, and then to the left is the range of system configurations, like memory sizes, network connections, or number of files. Resource contention is when multiple jobs compete for the same memory, file, or processor. There may also be data errors, human errors, or hardware failures. All of these conditions stress the system, and they can all occur alone or in various combinations. As shown in the shaded area in the center, it's only possible to test a small percentage of the almost infinite variety of cases. All the other areas are not tested. The density of the defects you find in the blue shaded area it's an indication of the number left in the untested regions. And when the system operates in untested ways, 
it is likely to encounter these defects and fail. Thus, when such systems are under the most stress, they're least reliable. The quality strategy I will be talking about is to build in quality before test. As a result of the current test-based software process, you not only get poor quality software, but testing takes many months or even years. Further, since testing is inherently unpredictable, development schedules are inaccurate and cost estimates are a little better than guesses. Finally, since it's very expensive to fix defects after development, software repair costs often exceed the original costs of development. The cost of poor software performance is literally billions of dollars, and these costs have continued to grow. Let's look at some of the consequences of this situation. Serious errors were found in a study of nine programs used for analyzing seismic data. These oil exploration programs all executed identical algorithms and they should have given identical answers. As the testing continued, however, the answers rapidly diverged, with some errors reaching 100%. These differences were caused by simple mistakes in the way the programs were written. In effect, these programs were expensive random number generators, and these random numbers were used by exploration companies to make multi-million dollar decisions on where to drill oil wells. In aerospace, the situation is much the same. The Ariane 5 rocket failed because of a software error. In another example, the programmers for the Mars Explorer used English units instead of metric. This error caused the Explorer to enter too low a Mars orbit and be destroyed. This simple software error cost over $100 million. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, has been supporting the U.S. space program for many years. They have a highly competent staff of engineers and scientists who use the same software practices as everyone else. Because of launch schedule delays, JPL has tested some of their systems for many months, and in some cases, they've recorded all the defects they found. These data show that there were lots of defects in these small systems. As you can see, it took many months to find the defects in these spacecraft. From the shape of the curves, you can also judge the quality of the final product. It looks as if uh, the testing found most of Voyager's defects. This was probably the case since the mission did not have software problems. Magellan was a different story. After two plus years of system testing, the mission was plagued with software problems. The Galileo launch was delayed by the explosion of the space shuttle. While they made some changes in the spacecraft, these were principally hardware changes. And after nearly six years of testing, they were still finding software defects. These spacecraft had relatively small software systems but testing took a very long time. The security problems on the internet are perhaps the most frightening. The rate of internet site attacks is growing exponentially. While there are few publicly reported incidents, some losses have run to millions of dollars. One of the principal causes of security problems is defective software. Just about any error in a widely used program can be exploited. Software management has been a problem for many businesses. Costs are unpredictable, commitment's a joke, and quality an afterthought. There's an old proverb that says, if we don't change our direction, we're likely to end up where we're headed. So if you don't make changes, where you are headed will look much like where you've been. To address these problems, you must make changes at three levels. First, you need an appropriate management environment. Without effective management, little else works very well. Even with sound management, however, Productive organizations must have productive engineering teams. But the methods for building and leading effective teams are not obvious. The Team Software Process, or TSP, shows you and your people how to build and run effective engineering teams. Finally, without sound engineering practices, no organization can produce quality products. The Personal Software Process, or PSP, shows software professionals how to follow such practices. 